what, what the mate is talking about. We talked about gatekeepers in Hollywood and you know, some of the people that, that might be out there blocking. Who in Hollywood do you trust? I don't trust nobody. You know, I got my two, I got my two best friends who I've known since fourth and fifth grade. Mm -hmm. uh, that's who I trust. Uh, I don't trust nobody. Right. Especially this Hollywood game. Cause this shit is so fickle and so phony. Yeah. You know, it's mind blowing to me, man. I, I, I did an audition one time and I'm driving back and I'm in Studio City and I pull up at a stoplight and this black SUV pulls up next to me. Windows are tinted. I can't really see who's in it, but I can see enough to see that the driver is motioning for me to turn, put my window down. Mm -hmm. I put my window down, it's Mark Wahlberg. And Mark mm -hmm. Wahlberg looks over and he goes, yo, you a funny motherfucker, man. You a funny motherfucker. He said it with such passion. And I'm like, oh, and I, you know, this is Mark fucking Wahlberg. He's one of the biggest stars in the game. So I'm like, oh shit. So I said, yo, Mark, man, let me get your number, man. Maybe you could, we could do something. You got a production company. So he gave me his man's number, which already lets you know, oh shit. Like, why wouldn't you give me your number personally if you're that much of a fan? But I get it. Maybe you got a lot of motherfuckers that'll call you. So you hand me off to your man. I said, okay. Long story short, called him a couple times. Nothing never happened. And this is the part of this business. Did you contact with him? Did you at least talk to him? No. Okay. I called his man two, three times. It was always, Mark's doing something. He gonna get back to you, blah, blah, blah. And I got a three call rule. I'm gonna call you three times. Mm -hmm. Whether I call you, text you, email you, voicemail you three times. After that, I'm done. I'm not chasing you. Um, and I'm just going, you know, everybody goes, everything happens for a reason. I'm still trying to figure out what the fuck was the reason for that? This nigga stopped me, told me to put my window down, complimented me. Well then let's do something, man. And, 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 and so many of these cats talk shit, but when it's time to move, nothing. Have you ever done that? Have you ever done somebody like that? Like say, yo, yeah, you know, you hit my number and then when they call you, you know, you ain't got time for them? No, no, because if I, if I don't want to fuck with you, I just won't fuck with you. Mm -hmm. So, and when I have given my number, I will do things within reason. You know, you got to be careful because some motherfuckers go out of reason. Hey man, I'm so glad, like you telling me about your music. Then when we talk, hey man, can you help with three months of my rent? Nigga, right. that's, why are we, we talking about that now? Like, it, it just, you know, so you got to kind of be careful with that. I, right. Listen, people assume because I'm in the business, I can change their life. No, mm -hmm. I can't. I can help where I can, but I can only do so much. Well, if you help, if you, it depends on what you do, though, like, because, it, you know, just planting a seed, I mean, just making an introduction, who knows what, what could become of that, you know? Mm -hmm. That's, that's, it, it's not a, it's not a lot of people in Hollywood that actually would just automatically just introduce somebody to some, somebody and not expect anything in return. You dig what I'm saying? Like, right. And, and it's probably like that. I'm sure it's like that in the rest of the world, you know, but, uh, everybody is always like trying to see what they can get out of a situation. Uh, and I think, but, but I, I believe personally, depends on how much work you're putting in. If, I, if I'm putting in some work now, I'm not gonna go work for you. Now, if I gotta work for you, you asking me to work, that's different then, I'm gonna have to get paid. But if, if I'm in a room and, uh, and, and I'll, I've already vetted you, I know you are, I ain't just introduced to anybody, anybody, but if I already vetted you and I know you straight people, you good or whatever, and there's somebody right here I can introduce you to, bam, y'all take it from there. I'm good. I've done a lot of that. I've, I've, I've done that hundreds of times in this industry um, I, and, and without really even looking for anything. But that's, that's kind of, 
Yeah. And I'm sorry. And now that now that you brought it, let me let me dispel a myth, because again, I know as people watch this on YouTube, I know when you scroll down and read the comments, let me dispel a myth that has been around about me. People, some comedians, black comedians in particular, dudes who are on the come up or trying to make a name for themselves. There's this rumor going around that Aries refuses to work with other black comedians. Okay, first of all, let me say this. I've worked with other black comedians. Prior to the dude who opens for me now, Andy Steinberg, and we have a podcast together. I used to fuck with a dude out of Atlanta named um, Gerard Guillory, and he would open for me. But we eventually got into a beef over some shit where, again, once you start helping people, at some point, people become comfortable. And once they get comfortable, they start to expect you to do things you normally wouldn't do. But I don't wanna get off my point. My point is this, yes, I don't want, like I come out and I do 20 minutes, 30 minutes of racial material. And if you come out before me and that's your whole act, and now you've done 30 racial, 30 minutes of racial material, I do 30 minutes of racial material. And my audience is extremely mixed. There's too much of some, it's just too much of a good thing. I don't want to beat the audience over the head with white people, black people jokes. It's too much. So yes, and most times when I've tried to work with black comics, I will tell them, hey man, because I touch on this, do me a favor, don't touch on that. And they go, yeah, I got you. Then they go out there and they do exactly what they want. And I've had that happen too many times. So yes, I would prefer just to mix the show up and give it some variety. I would prefer a white dude open up for me. That's not to say that I'm opposed to a black dude, but if you're gonna be rebellious and do what you wanna do after I've given you specific directions to do what I need you to do, well then yeah, that's a problem. And here's the last thing. I'm 30 years in this game. I've earned my stripes. I'm a vet. I don't have to answer to you. So to all of you niggas that talk about Aries on hire black people, who the fuck are you? <laughs> I don't answer to you niggas. I got stripes. It's my show. I'm the headliner. I do what the fuck I want to do. Earn your stripes and then talk to me. Now, you know what just happened there, right? What happened? <laughs> you just did a classic Aries Spears, uh, or made a classic Aries Spears comment that you probably should have held on to. You right to feel that way, but you actually said it. And you know they are going to pick you apart for that. <laughs> They're gonna get you for that shit, bro. Michael Corley, Mikey Corleone wishes Sonny Corleone execution. What the haters talking about? Yeah.